how do you work on yourself if you're an integrator type person? Hey, I'm Donnie Bovine, CEO of Success Champion Networking and best-selling author. This is Growth Mode, where we teach you how to get to business freedom through sales advice, working on yourself, and up-leveling your network. As always, I'm joined by Kevin Snow, the tactician of sales automation and processes. Hang out as we dive into how do you do personal growth if you're really this integrator versus visionary type person. Oh, I almost screwed it up right there at the end, Kevin. <laughs> Holy hell. Well, I've started not putting the titles on the recordings until we're actually into the conversation. <laughs> the, the one before this, man, it took me like 10 times to get through that fucking intro. Um, we changed it up, so that's the problem is I'm trying to learn the the new new intro. So I'll have it one of these days. I'll have it one of these days. So, so you know... A lot of people have heard visionary integrator, you know, you've heard it uh, a little bit mentioned kind of an e-myth. You've heard it a lot with uh, a bunch of the peer group organizations. I can't remember the actual name of the book it comes from, but the the idea is, you know, there's a visionary, then there's an integrator. So last episode we just focused on, I think that was episode 118. We focused on me doing the visionary side of things. And this one, we're going to dive in with Kevin and talk more about the integrator side of things. And I, and I, I can tell you from my perspective, uh, hanging out with as much as I have with Kevin and understanding his world, it's been a evolution for me to change my way. I think about, you know, integrator type people and how they function and think. So uh, I think this is going to be a fun conversation. I think uh, Kevin's going to probably get real uncomfortable with me here in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Kevin, I'll kick it over to you, bud. I mean, um, how do you first, how do you define integrator? I mean, uh, what's that definition? So I, that, that's one of the things I've actually kind of been reading about because I wanted to know if it was just another fancy word for a high C, uh, if it was completely different, you know, and what it was. So I, I've been reading about it. And the, the funny thing is, is they say integrators are normally extroverts. I'm like, well, that's or, not me. That doesn't make sense to me at all. So what the integrator does, uh, when you read it and you get down to the actual definition of an integrator, an integrator is a person who can see the interrelationships between different parts of a business and then connects the right people and is able to do that, uh, get the right people doing things and moving and uh, they, they uh, refine processes that way. So you do have, uh, you do have introverted uh, integrators, which tend to be much more process driven, which is, would tend to be me. Um, but yeah, so that was the first thing. It's like, Oh, wow. Okay. So they're, they're actually extroverts. And I, and it makes sense because if they are doing conflict resolution between departments and between people and, you know, making teams work functionally better, you have to have the, some of that people energy to be able to do that. You know, you can't just sit back and design a process and then hand it over. They're actually going out and doing work and getting people to integrate together. So I don't know if I'm really your traditional integrator, um, because if you play off of that definition. Right, right, right. And which, which is mind blowing for me because it's not how I saw integrator, but I think in my head, I was seeing the high C versus, you know, what they were actually doing. Um, so, so that's fascinating. So, yeah, that was a big, the big surprise for me too. When I read it, it's like, oh, they're normally extroverts. What, what the hell? So then I, then I <laughs> dug deeper, uh, because I've started following a bunch of integrator type coaches because they're, how they're talking, what they're doing is like, well, this makes way more sense to me. Uh, but now as I was reading more, it, it really totally made more sense. Like, all right, so here's what an integrator does. They go into a business that's dysfunctional. They take that, you know, dysfunctional family and they make it work and they figure and take the dysfunction out of all the interactions. So it's, you know, uh, as we continue to grow and, and expand success champions, you know, learning that skill is going to be really cool. 
Yeah, yeah, it's going to be huge for the company as a whole. So then I'm going to shift my questions into twofold here. So one, I want to talk about the integrator thing, but I also wanted to bring in the introversion side of things because I think a lot of people are, are either married to somebody who's this, this high C integrator type person or they're dating somebody or they have kids that are in this regard. So um, Kevin and I talked a little bit about this at the Badass Business Summit and the amount of people that immediately leaned in and wanted to know how Kevin was working on himself was, was actually really cool to see. And I wasn't expecting to have that much of, of response from the crowd when, when Kevin, you know, I'll let you tell him. What did you tell him at the it, summit to get everybody to respond? Either that or it's like about fucking time he's getting better. Oh, no, actually, I think they were saying it's about time Donnie shut the fuck up and let Kevin get a word in twice. <laughs> Donnie, stop picking on Kevin. Um, so we we really talked about because you and I got really frustrated with ourselves for with each other for a while. Uh, and one of the things that we do at our weekly operations meeting is we start off the meeting with what did you do this last week to work on yourself? And there was one week where I came and was like, I have no clue. I have no idea what I did to work with myself. Uh, and and we talked through it a little bit that week, but then I, it was either the week later or, or a couple weeks later, we, 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 you know, we damn near came to blows virtually. <laughs> and it was, uh, and, and Donnie was just couldn't un- comprehend that whole concept of not understanding how you're working on yourself. And me having this expectation that I had to work on myself the same way he was and not feeling, and I actually felt broken because I couldn't have the giant aha moments that Donnie was having. And we talked about those last week. That, that And that's why I said you have this annoying ability to have these amazing ahas <laughs> like on a daily basis. And and I don't. So it, it's, you know, he was frustrated that I wasn't working on myself. And I was frustrated that I wasn't working on myself and having the same interaction or reactions and success that Donnie was. And it was and neither of us were really happy with the situation. But, you know, then I asked the question, well, what what does working on yourself mean? And, you know, and you gave me an answer where you literally just saw me relax. I'm like, oh, I can do that. And, and that answer was, you know, it was learning things. And it was whether you are learning things about you or learning things about how to run our business better or how to be more successful at what we're doing that's all considered working on yourself. I'm like, Oh, I do that. I do that all the time. <laughs> like, Oh, all right. I, I'm not broken. This is, this is cool. Uh, and, and well, I mean, that, I'd still be broken. I just couldn't let that go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tight kettle calling the pot black. So, right. Um, but yeah. And, and that was really big for me because now I could, you know, it opened up the ways that I could work on myself and it didn't have to be in this, this self help, you know, read the book, you know, make these me- huge mental shifts, which I don't think, you know, I have made a ton of mental shifts, but I don't think they're giant. I think th- for me, it has to be incremental movements. Um, are you okay if I, if I share the, what you said to me when you saw your picture from the first summit? Yeah. Or do you want to tell? Why don't you tell me? No, go, go ahead. ahead. So, uh, Kevin, do you, will you, t- did you tell me or did you put me? Were we talking? I don't remember if we were on Zoom or not, not when you said it, but I think we're uh, on Zoom. And the the phrase that he said was, man, I saw the picture of us at the first Badass Business Summit three years ago. And he goes, I don't even recognize that dude. I am a completely different person now, um, which is a really fucking big thing for him <laughs> to say because, you know, uh, uh, he just doesn't talk like that you know, uh, ever. So it was, it was a really cool thing to say, um, to watch. And only thing that I told him is, you know, because you're finally starting to show up as you, I mean, back then you were still trying to be, you know, corporate guy, you know, wasn't going to go on stage without dress and looking a certain way and, and acting a certain way. So, um, so it's been a cool, cool growth moment to see. Well, even, what if, you know, even at the summit this year, it was one of the things I noticed is when, when people come up to do uh, selfies with me, 
my feeling toward it was completely different than previous summits. And, Why so? Um, I, I don't know the why. <laughs> We're, I'm still figuring okay, out how was it different? But it was, it was, you know, the the feeling was, it, you know, I was way more relaxed and and excited about the opportunity to do that with people, as opposed to be feeling. I think previously I felt way more self conscious about it, and. I wasn't as relaxed in the moment and excited about, you know, they're excited to come up and have do selfies with you and me. And they're like, yeah, I totally got to get a picture with Donnie and Kevin. Uh, and I, we had one person that did a picture with you, then with me, then we had to do it together. And then she brought in other people. And it was, it was a big thing for them to do that. It wasn't a big thing for me. And now this year it was, it was more of a big thing to be able to do that with people. Mm, that's cool. That's cool. Um, and it's just funny, the difference between me and you, because I expect that, you know, uh, and I love doing it. I love doing it. I love when people come up and ask to do it, but um, I always have. And because going back to just my style is it's the spotlights on me. And what I continue to try and do with those selfies is make the spotlight about them. Yep. Um, which, which is always fun to try and figure out how to do. The, I, I think a, a pivotal moment for me working with you is uh, when Elizabeth and I got into it in the car. So explaining how some of our conversations were going and some of the things that I was saying to you. And she looked me right in the face and said, you can't change him. He's got to do this shit on his own. And I went, fuck. And I realized that a lot of things that I was trying to do was to get you to do what I was doing. And, you know, your personality type's just not the same as mine. So you're not going to do it the same way. So when, when you ask me to define, you know, what working on yourself means, um, it was a kind of a breakthrough moment for the both of us. Cause I was like, okay, uh, that means you got to learn something, learn, you know, bring it back to us. And, and you did your whole world, shifted uh, tremendously and uh even you know other ways you continue to show up you can tell um it's like you almost found a next gear better version of yourself so so it's been really really cool last episode you said something and i wrote it down because i wanted to make sure we talked about it in this one uh you said reading the book was completing the task yeah and I, and that just, it's not very often people say things like, oh my God, that's, that's it. That was one of the times. So congratulations. You, you made the list, <laughs> uh, but it was a really big thing. That's really how I felt about it. It's like, all right, so what's my, what's my working on me task this week? And all right. So I, I did this thing and I learned this thing. All right, cool. Um, and that was, I think, understanding. And I think that plays into the, the high C piece of me where I'm very detailed, task oriented, you know, I have my to-do list, got to work down the list, get things done. That was a lot about how I was looking at the whole working on myself concept. Uh, and it was like, all right, there's something I have to do. Hmm. Yeah. And I would say you approached it a lot that way. So, you know, cause every Monday we, which of course we start off with, you know, tell me how you worked on yourself. And, you know, Kevin's was, very much the the okay this is what i did except for the one week you didn't have any and then i'm like what the fuck dude we agreed to this and you're not doing this what the fuck and i love that you were able to turn the the, the corner on that up until this point you know you and i working together was there an inclination or desire to figure out what made you work what made you tick and to improve yourself? I know it's a deep ass personal question, but I'm curious. Yes and no. So I, I've always wanted to improve myself. That's always been a thing. Uh, you know, competitive athlete in college and high school, it, it was always that how do you get better? How do you get, you know, make that one, that one shift? How do you do things better? Working in technology, it's always how do I, how can I do things better? So there was that definitely wanting to improve myself, but there was never really the, the all right so why do i do things the way i do 
you know, I do all the the assessments. I do the disc survey colors and I'd understand all that stuff and it would make sense of, all right, so I would do things this way. Uh, so here's how I have to do things with other people so it doesn't come across wrong. And I always looked at it that way. All right, so how do I have to do things to interact with other people? Less, why do I do the things the way I do? Interesting. Now are you looking more at how do you do do the things, why do you do the things you do? Um, well, yeah, because you forced me. <laughs> yeah. So no, <laughs> I, I just I couldn't resist. Um, but no, I I am I am looking at things and trying to figure stuff out because now I'm you know I'm starting to realize you know all right so I'm doing this one thing and it's it's why is why am I doing it and why is it stopping me from doing other things that I know I need to do. So I am becoming more self-aware about that type of stuff than wait, I was wait, in the past. Wait, what word did you say? I'm sorry. I'm self-aware. Wow. Dude. So, hey, I'm getting you to use CRMs and do processes, and you're making me go. <laughs> so We'll never go woo. Uh, <laughs> you know. But I am. It is, you know, because you know, we both see the same therapist, Mandy, and she's been really cool to work with and, and do stuff with. Uh, so, you know, now I you know, at the beginning when we did this, I literally and I told you this, and I told her this, like, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with these things. <laughs> uh, am I supposed to come prepared with things? Is she going to ask me questions? Are we going to uncover things? So how does this work? And I needed to have that process. I needed to know what this agenda was going to look like so I could go in and, and, and make, cause I wanted to make use of the time. I didn't want to just spend an hour and it's like, Oh yeah, it was cool. What did you accomplish? I don't know. So I, I needed to understand that type of stuff, but now I'm starting to come in. It's like, all right, so here's what I want to talk about today. Here's a thing I noticed that's been on my head that's over the fucking weekend. Huge. Um, and, yeah, and it's it's a completely different way of thinking. And when I had the thought this weekend, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to tell Donnie about this. This will be good for the show on Monday. Um, so, you know, and that's that's one of the shifts I'm seeing. But it took time. It took other smaller shifts to get me there. You know, where you do these huge, like, 90-degree turns and aha moments, I can't do those. I, I, I'm, I'm, like, turning a carrier <laughs> you know it takes me a little bit longer to make those mental shifts for that type of stuff technology wise and process wise ooh, we can shift we'll let's go uh but the other stuff it takes me longer to do and i think it's because i gotta process it so i'm not saying the way i did it was the right way to do it you know basically forcing you to you know work on yourself I did ask and didn't make you go see a therapist, but I did ask and you finally made a decision on your own. Um, but the, do you think you would have gotten to where you're at right now, shifting your thinking and starting to really think about yourself, work on yourself, be self-aware if I wouldn't have pushed you off the fucking ledge? Uh, all right. So I, I have to tell people, yes, he did ask me. He didn't like say you will go do this, but he asked me a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> and at one point he's like, Do you want me to stop asking you? I'm like, Yeah, just let me let me think about this and figure it out. And he was like, All right. Um But you no, know, and it took someone and I don't use the word pressuring me, because it, it wasn't pressure. Um, I was nagging on you pretty fucking like I, hard, though. You were you were nagging on me, but it, it wasn't like this really hard pressure that I had to go do it. Uh, there wasn't like these ultimatums Correct. coming out Correct. that I had to do it or else. Um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, especially for, you know, C's. Well, and I don't know if it's just even for us. I think it might be just for anyone. You need to have that person on the outside who sees what's going on and knows there's a way to fix it, but understands that they can't be the one to fix it. So I think you knew what was going on and you knew what was happening inside my head, but you, and you said multiple times, I don't want to be the one that fixes you. Yep. Uh, which was good. Cause I don't want that relationship with you either. Um, so, but you knew how to, 
get me to that point where someone could. I, I love that. I have this weird ability to be able to read somebody and most times know exactly what's going on and where there's at. You could you could see how you were showing up and interacting with the things you were doing, but you know, uh, I wasn't going to have the conversations that needed to have happen with yourself and the likes to to figure that stuff out. So I know in my head, man, I'm like, God damn it, want this motherfucker just go see her. <laughs> um, and but I also, you know, knew that I could not, you know, force you to go right that because it would never work. You had to make the choice on your own. And so I was constantly battling with myself of how the fuck do I get him just to go do this? So, um, you know, uh, and I, you know, from, from, from my standpoint, it's, it's a frustration because I think through a lot of my journey, people saw that shit in me, you know, they're like, man, I know he's got it. I know he's going to be able to level up. I know he's going to do it, but he just won't do it. And I think I was seeing that you, um, and so you were catching the brunt of motherfucker. I wish somebody would have done this shit to me. So you're going to get it. <laughs> oh, uh, well, and, and I, and I don't even think it was, that's, that's most likely what was going through your head, but I don't think it was coming. It wasn't coming across that hey, way. Mission accomplished. <laughs> so, but, and the funny thing is right now, you know, we'll each have our meetings with Mandy. Uh, and then we'll get together and we'll talk yep, about our Mandy, meetings with Mandy that's true, with that's each true. other. And we'll still have those same conversations yeah. that you didn't want to have in the first place, but now because they've been prefaced by her, now we have them. And it, it's really cool because we, we know, you know, we're, we're pretty much stuck with each other as friends because we know way too much <laughs> stuff about each other. I got um, all the blackmail you know, I need. <laughs> yeah. And right. vice versa. Uh, so you know, and it's, but it's really cool because I, I think, especially as guys, we don't always have that person that we can have those mm. conversations with. Well, that, that was probably one of the wildest things that you said to me was, uh, you know, you, what was, how'd you say it? You said, uh, no other friends talk to you like this. You know, like when we're talking about our Monday meeting. So you didn't always know how to, respond and what's what's sad and awesome about that is why not i mean what not 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 why not to you but why can't more dudes have these type of conversations why do we always have our guards up um it's not like we're we're trying to do a fucking crying circle with a bunch of dudes sitting around <laughs> crying around a fucking fire or some stupid shit like we know some assholes out there that do you know this is you know, generally looking at another dude going, all right, fucker, let's run. Well, and I think part of it, you talked last week about the being vulnerable and needing to be comfortable being vulnerable. You know, we didn't start off four years ago like this. You know, we, you know, we had some really good conversations four years ago, but they weren't at the depth that they are now. And it, ta I think it takes time to build a relationship where you can have those conversations. And then it's, you know, it's a lot of head trash, especially for, for guys that can I let this person see this side of me? Yeah. Yeah. I see that, you know, there's always a pissing contest and everything that takes a place, you know, and a bunch of dudes get together, but, um, you know, and I'm not telling anybody that they should ever just walk out and fucking just start sharing this shit. I think there's, there's some dudes in this world that put on a show in certain situations where they want, you know, the world to know how shitty their life was. So they're going to be the first one to share and all that kind of crap. But I think, um, that I would say for a healthy work environment, like you and I got, you know, you, there, there's gotta be some of this, you gotta know what, I mean, I don't ever want to create an environment where, you know, conversations like this can't be had inside the company as we continue to grow this, this up. Now that you have really begun to work on yourself um, and that you're legitimately leveling up and even seeing the results yourself, what's changed for you? Uh 
oh, uh, God, I'm uh, uh, more, you know, I, I feel more relaxed about stuff. I don't get stressed out about things as much as I did before. I don't let things get to me. Um, I'm definitely more confident in how I interact with different people that I wasn't before. Uh, and you know, it's, I, I, I don't really know yet how to put it all into words for how, you know, the difference in how I'm feeling. Right. So it'll come, it'll come. I got a better question for you. All right. How do you go from this introverted guy that tries to put yourself out there and be outgoing, extroverted, and everything else? How do you go from this kind of not me to stand off his type person to then do what you do on stage? Because you become a completely different person on stage. How the fuck <laughs> do you do that? Well, I think it's, you know, going back to like uh, Robin Williams, and the other other performers, it's when you when I go out on stage and, and I present, you know, it is a persona. It is I now get to be someone else. You know, it's you know, you look at all the top actors and they all tend to be more introverted uh, and that acting is a lot way for them to interact with people without it being themselves. So, and I don't know if that is necessarily the sounds really healthy or not, but <laughs> it's like, oh, I get to interact with people, but they don't actually see me. Uh, they see someone else. But for me, you know, I, I competed in wrestling. So I, you know, when you go out on the mat, it is just you and everyone's watching at you and looking at you. There's no one that you can hide behind. So I was okay with that. Uh, the speaking part I had to work on. The actual being able to speak in front of people and not get tongue tied and, and nervous, you know, that part I had to work at. But I always was okay with being out like in that spotlight for bits and pieces of time. You know, I don't want it all the time, but put me on a stage in front of 500 people and I, I'm going to have fun. And I think that was part of me learning to be able to do that was just having fun with it. As I said, that's like, oh, that's what it was. It was I learned to have fun. You know, if you go out and you're so nervous and your stomach's tied up in knots and you're sweating, it's going to suck. And that's going to reinforce it. Oh, my God, this sucks. Right. And I remember a couple presentations I did where, you know, they always told you if you're getting uncomfortable, make eye contact. I'm like, well, that's dumb. That makes me more uncomfortable. <laughs> but, the, but then I do it and I, I make eye contact with someone. And as I'm talking about making a point, I, I look them in the eye uh, and then they look away. I'm like, oh, they're just as uncomfortable as I am. And now I'm like, oh, all right. So now we're all uncomfortable. This is okay. And it, it's just like little, those little realizations as I was on stage, I'm like, oh. Cool. I remember vividly when that one happened, uh, but it's little things like that that just made it kept making it easier and easier to speak and to be out in front of people. You know, it, it's kind of like that, you know, when you watch a sitcom and someone does something super embarrassing and you feel embarrassed yep. for them, even though you know it was a scripted show, you know, the audience is like that, too. You know, they want to they want to cheer for you uh, and they want to support you. And when you do something funny, they want to laugh with you. Uh, and when you do something embarrassing, they're going to be embarrassed with you. And it's it makes it easier. It's almost like you have this giant community when you're on stage. Absolutely. I, I tell you, every time you get on stage, somebody afterwards comes up to me and goes, I didn't I, I didn't know oh, how do you do that? Who was that on stage? I mean, they're blown away every time <laughs> because you, you are a damn good speaker and you put on a fucking show every time you speak and people are just not used to seeing that side of you. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it's hard to show off when you're on zoom. You know, I, you know, it's, it's, I do, you know, I learned all the little tricks when you're on stage, you make bigger, you make bigger motions. You do your emotions bigger so people in the back can see that you are having an emotion. Uh, and it changes. And for the people up front who are now getting the, the really big stuff from you, it, it's completely different than what they're expecting. So the people in the back, it looks normal. 
<laughs> to the people in the front. They're like, oh, my God, who is this? Um, he, he's way more energized and, and active than we're used to. It's like, well, yeah, because there's people 50 feet away from me that have to be able to tell that I'm laughing and that I'm acting surprised or, you know, whatever the emotion I'm trying to convey is. So it's, you know, it's understanding how to tell a story on stage and, you know, and perfecting that craft. It's just like we tell people with uh, podcasts, you tell your story once and you pay attention to what people gravitate to. And then you focus on how you tell that. And then you keep building your story that way. It's the same way with speaking and, and presenting on stage. My, 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 my brain over here is flipping a hundred miles an hour debating whether I should ask this question, but I'm going to ask it anyways. So the question really is, how do I get that guy to show up all the time? <laughs> um, I've, oh, wow. Uh, so I, I think you, you get versions of that guy all the time. You and I, I see it all the time, right? So, I see we were yeah. able to do this, but the rest of the world doesn't get to see that side of you. You've just gotten so comfortable around me, right? That, that you show up as, as, as a regular dude all the time, but the whole world doesn't always get to see that guy. Yeah. And, and I, I'm getting better at it. So, you know, how I am when I'm on other podcasts, uh, like I, and I, I tend to try and mirror the host and what their personality is. So I just told you last week I was on with, I uh, was a Jennifer who had like literally interviewed yeah, you the Jennifer day before. Fisher. She is super high energy, like giant permagrin smile energy. She's great um, though. I had such a great conversation with her. She, oh, she, we had what so much fun. Um, keep, keep going, I'll find it. So I, I tried to match her. So I was, you know, I was even like more energized than normal because I didn't want to not, I didn't want to be the, the mellow guy on stage with her. So how do you get more of this? I, oh God, I, I'm going to say this and it's going to haunt me. Just like every time I make a suggestion to you, it haunts me. Um, yeah, I, I just need to do more stuff out in front of the community. Yes, you do. So I know you've got uh, a couple of speaking engagements coming up. So um, yep. see that. And then, you know, we'll just find more ways to put you into mm. uh, uncomfortable situations. I like that. Whole <laughs> yeah, yeah. Idea. Two speaking engagements, whole, Miami, Kansas City. Uh, that I'm doing two of our becoming a champion trainings and one in October and I think one in November. Yep. As yep. well. Yep. So I want to get this really quick. Then we'll work on getting out of here. What question should I have asked you that I didn't? I hate it when people ask me that, but so the big question that I, I was surprised we didn't get to, I think we should cover is the one that Hannah asked us at the summit when we we're having this conversation. And she was like, all right, so my my husband is uh, introverted, high C personality. How do I get him to work on himself? And how do you as, you know, how do you get started in that? I think that's the conversation we need to, to end with. And it, it's really, you know, for, if you aren't the high, if you aren't a high C and you want the high C to work on themselves, you need to give them options. It can't, they, you can't expect them to work on themselves how you would. You can't, you know, if you are all into going to motivational speakers and you think your your person should go with you because that's going to help them, they that's probably not going to be it. I could care less about going to motivational speakers. And I used to go to them all the time. When I started out in business, I went to all the big, uh, you know, speaker things that would come to town. There'd always be motivational stuff. And then I'd come back and I'd do what high C's do. I'd go through my notes and figure out all my cool takeaways. And I'd be like, oh, this is actually nothing that's usable. There's nothing in here that I can apply to how I do my job. So I literally was like, all right, if you get too excited and you're just trying to pump me up, you that literally is a sign to me that you're worthless. <laughs> you're not going to be able to help me uh, and that I shouldn't pay attention. Not that you're worthless. The motivation is good, but it's, it's, it's a sign to me that I'm not going to get anything out of this and I'm not going to be in a better position after listening to it. So you need to give them ways to figure out what they want to work on and give them options. You know, for me, it was, all right, so I could learn stuff about the business. So, you know, KPIs was a big thing we're working on. Uh, the integrator visionary thing is something I'm learning about because it applies to me. 
you know, different things like that allow you to still work on yourself and it gives them the structure where it's stuff that they can actually apply. And that's a key thing. If you're, a, if you're a, in a relationship with a high C, there need to be outcomes that they can apply. It can't just be feel good working on your stuff, stuff. Love that. Love that. Uh, and well said, uh, we, we absolutely should have brought that up. So glad you did. Uh, Jennifer's uh, show is called A Life You Love Sales Tips with Jennifer Fisher. So go check her out. That was, that was funny that we didn't know we were both being on there interviewed. Uh, but I guess we're going to go back and do a session with her. So, Yeah, she's, I had our uh, Badass Business oh, on. Yeah. shirt on. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> And, and then I brought you up. She's like, all right. So I have to ask, <laughs> you're wearing the shirt. You're talking about you it. She have said, I'm like, just a big yeah, fan. He's... You know, I'm his number one fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Total right, fan boy right. moment. So, awesome. Well, guys, this has been a fun episode. Learn a little bit more. Let you guys meet Kevin a little bit more. So hopefully you got some good stuff out of this. So uh, if you got any tips, tricks, any value out of this, please make sure you're subscribed to the show. Leave us a review. Uh, on your takeaways or what you think of the show and share this out with one person that means the world to us. And as always, love you, mean it. See you back.